out of his way to say, we still consider January 15th as the deadline for getting out of Kuwait. You're absolutely right, Dan. This is the situation. The main store, the main action, the main, the main scene uh, is really the American uh, Iraqi scene. But should that scene fail to yield the dividend we expect of it, then the hawkers and the vendors, the French, the Algerians, the Yugoslavs, all these other peoples with small bargains of their own, uh, will go into action because we know that the French are innately suspicious of the U.S. They think that the U.S. is trigger happy in the Middle East. They think that President Bush is cornered and cornered himself. And anyway, we know about the French. They would like to inherit the American position in the Middle East. Should we make mistakes? Should we not uh, prevail? Uh, they want to be. They want to cover their bets. Uh, should we go to war? Well, they're on the side of the Americans. But should this end in the bazaar, they want to tell the Arabs that they were the ones uh, who put pressure on the Americans and spared the region the consequences of war. So yes, there is the main action of the Iraqis and the Americans, and there are all these other peoples in the wings with their own little plans and their own little agendas. And that's something about which uh, Secretary of State Baker must be extremely concerned. Uh, David Burton, uh, with this uh, potential for Secretary Cheney asking the president to, in effect, authorize the possibility of calling up another one million reserves, nobody expects uh, all of those, perhaps uh, very few of them, actually to be called, uh, it, it, does the military feel it still needs more manpower to do the job? No, I think <clears throat> these are for the event that one <clears throat> the current authority on the 200,000 reserves expires, and you need to start replacing them. And a lot of these reserve units form very, perform very specialized functions. Water purification, for instance. There aren't a lot of reserve units that do water purification. So they've got to find these people that know how to do these tasks someplace. They have to go into this larger man pool to find them. Then also, there is the, uh, <coughs> the uh, prospect of casualties if we get into a shooting war. There are a lot of reservists over there uh, some of them are uh, fairly close to the uh, front lines, and if uh, Iraq uses some of its uh, missiles, uh, some reservists could be in harm's way, and you need a way to be able to replace those reservists. It's the kind of thing you do uh, when you're getting down to uh, making all of the final preparations for going to war. But I do not think that this means there has to be some additional call-up before the U.S. is ready. This is another preparatory step to going toward war. Uh, Bob Simon uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, let's take a look at, uh, at the calendar. Uh, Ramadan, uh, the most uh, deeply religious period of the year for those of the Islamic faith, begins uh, in mid-March, continues on through the early part of June. Sandstorms in the desert start uh, roughly around the 1st of March. With the flag rank people in Saudi Arabia you talk to, does this mean that the basic window, the preferred window for attack if there's going to be one, is sometime early February to the 1st of March? Absolutely, Dan. Early February, perhaps even earlier, I think it would be. We can't really speculate on when, when it will begin, but all the speculation we hear is in terms of February, occasionally January, particularly in terms of the air war beginning. There is a feeling here, particularly among Saudis, that President Bush will not want to wait too long after the 15th of January to start something that he might want to launch an air war or some, some severe air strikes very shortly thereafter. But nobody is talking March. Everybody assumes that by March the war will be, have either been averted or underway or over. David.